Besides water, good organic soil is the number one thing you can give your garden so it can give back to you. But what exactly is organic soil versus non-organic soil? Isn't all soil organic? What soil is the best soil to get started with in my garden? What amendments can get my garden off to the best start or transform a struggling garden? There's really no need to complicate or overthink any of these things. It's really so easy to overthink pretty much everything in the garden. And trust me on this, I am a Virgo. And if you really start researching soil, you'll find so much scientific information, which is great if you wanna read on a deeper level about what's going on in your soil. You're also gonna find contradicting information things that say to do this, don't do this, or you're gonna kill your plants, and all kinds of things. I'm not an expert coming at you saying, according to research, you need to do this, or you need to do this, or else. I'm just sharing with you what I've learned firsthand, trying to establish and maintain the best soil for my garden after both failed lots of failed and successful harvests. And of course, I'm really busy with life, so I always just try to keep things as simple and easy as possible. Most of all, it's okay to make mistakes in the garden, and I don't even really like to call them mistakes because they offer so much valuable experience. You're going to learn a lot about garden soil just by getting out and planting things in it. Speaking about organic versus non-organic soil, organic soil is always going to be free of chemicals. Non-organic soil has added chemical fertilizers and also possibly products for disease, insect, and pest resistance. Non-organic soil oils are going to lack organic matter so they're not necessarily going to create ecosystems that promote healthier soil for the long term in your garden. The most common organic matter found in organic soil is compost, manure, and mulch. Additives like worm castings or otherwise just worm poop, for example, are going to enrich your soil. Organic soil is the end result of animal matter, compost, and plant decomposition. That decomposition process makes dirt that's full of minerals and also little microorganisms that help transform organic matter into a soil that is going to nourish your plants and allow them to thrive. This is also called humus, not hummus. So simply put, the chemicals that are released during the breakdown process become the nutrients that feed your plants. Loamy soil is ideal for most garden plants because of its ability to hold nutrients and moisture. Loam is soil that's composed mostly of sand, silt, and a smaller amount of clay. It has about a 40, 40, 20% concentration of sand, silt, and clay, or in my experience, even less clay is better. No matter what imbalance your soil currently has, the key to achieving fertile loamy soil is to amend it with organic matter. You can never ever go wrong with a soil test through your local university's extension office. It's going to tell you all about your soil in great detail along with amendment recommendations. The recommendations may or may not be organic, so it's really up to you to decide which way you would like to go in your garden. There are always organic alternatives to chemicals. In our area here in upstate South Carolina, we have native soil that's very high in clay. It's red clay, it's like concrete when it's dry. I've attempted growing all kinds of things from tomatoes to corn with little to no harvest and figured out the hard way that amending would take a really long time to accomplish a nice loam that would be ideal for achieving successful garden harvests. Enter raised beds. You have so much more control over the soil and of course it takes time to build and then maintain the healthiest soil for the long term, but it's almost instant gratification starting out in a raised bed. So what soil is best to fill raised beds and containers? You'll see some YouTube channels testing several different brands of bagged soil. If this is overwhelming to you, I would go to your local nursery or landscape supply business Business and see what they offer. I like to look for OMRI listed products because they're allowed to be used in certified organic operations so you know that they're not going to be full of chemicals. I like Fox Farms Happy Frog Soil. I, I say this in so many of my videos. I've just been using it for years for my seed starting and in my grow bag soil recipe. For my raised beds I have composted soil delivered in bulk from a local business. It's 
just cheaper than buying bags and I can also talk with the business owner about exactly what is in this soil. I also know that it's always freshly mixed because they sell lots of it in our area. It's a mixture of their screened topsoil and mushroom compost. With the help of Furman University, they were able to come up with this loamy and ready to plant in soil recipe for their customers. So I would highly recommend talking to local nurseries and landscape supply businesses because buying in bulk is economical if that's possible for your space. You can also ask them if it's organic, meaning does it contain chemicals. The mushroom compost in the soil I use is sourced from an organic mushroom farm and it's a mixture of wheat straw, peat moss, um, cotton seed meal, and cotton seed hulls, corn cobs, uh, cocoa bean shells, gypsum, lime, and chicken litter. It's actually the compost that the mushroom farm uses to grow their mushrooms and has to be discarded after only 18 days because of the mushroom growing process, not because it's deficient of nutrients. I use a mixture of the soil I use in my raised beds and potting soil and mushroom compost for my grow bag containers. The reason why I add potting soil is to help prevent compaction and drainage issues that can happen in containers. After an Initially filling my raised beds and grow bags, continuing to amend every time I plant something new is really important for maintaining healthy and fertile soil. This is actually really simple. So I've been trying to make enough of my own compost for my entire garden and that continues to be a goal of mine. I actually had a worm bin at the other house I lived in here in South Carolina and that provided amazing black gold or um, worm casting compost. Where I'm living right now, I just have a lazy pile in the back of the garden here that I really don't take care of like I should and a little composting tumbler. Basically I do not make enough of my own compost to keep up with my garden's needs so I purchase mushroom compost in bulk from the local company I get my garden bed soil from and I top my beds with a few good inches of that before I plant everything. This has really reduced the need to fertilize because compost is actually in my opinion the best fertilizer. Unless the plants are heavy feeder like corn or I'm giving transplants a boost in the garden then I will fertilize with fish emulsion. I consider natural mulch when you mulch around the plants in your garden to be another amendment because it helps the soil to retain moisture and nutrients and eventually it decomposes into the soil so that's just more organic matter. Cover crop. Cover crops. <laughs> Are you being chased by those flies? They're like horse flies. I think they're horse flies. They're chasing everybody. Cover crops are another amendment that can protect the soil as a natural mulch and they can add organic matter and even nitrogen fixation. I made a video about this a while back showing how I plant cover crops in my raised beds in the fall. There are several kinds of cover crops that you can research and match to your specific climate and garden's needs. I usually get my cover crop seeds from high mowing organic seeds, but whichever company you buy your cover crop seeds from, they will have information helping you choose the best varieties for your garden. Another amendment I started to use last year is wool pellets. They actually hold 20 times their weight in water so they help the soil retain moisture. They can also wick water away if you have super heavy rain in your garden. They're a natural slow release fertilizer that lasts for the whole entire growing season. You can mix them into the soil when you first fill a raised bed or a container or you can add them to furrows when you're planting your seeds or seedlings. As long as they're down into the soil where the root system is because that's where they are going to be the most beneficial in your soil. There are lots of different types of organic matter you can work into your soil, but I'm just mentioning the ones I've been using with success in my garden. If you're sourcing manure, just like soil, I would be careful and make sure you know that it doesn't contain persistent chemicals that will be in your soil for a really long time and negatively affecting your plants. You can see how starting with a good loamy organic soil and then following up with organic amendments can prevent and also solve common soil issues like poor drainage, nutrient deficiencies, and compacted soil that can hinder plant growth. By simply starting with that good organic soil and doing a soil test if you'd like, mulching around your plants, using organic fertilizers like fish emulsion and wool pellets, and then adding compost whenever you plant something new, and even incorporating beneficial cover crops so your soil is never bare, you're empowered to have your best organic garden soil that will keep 
keep giving back for the long term. Please make sure to watch my video covering the details of how I fill my raised beds from scratch from the bottom up. As always, I appreciate you joining me and learning along with me in the garden, and thank you for supporting my channel by watching my videos.